So uh, I, I want to introduce some, one person I just met and one person I've known for a very long time. Uh, Derek I just met uh, at this trip. Uh, he comes with an impressive resume and, and, and an important story for us uh, that has to do um, with exercise, which is the theme of this, but of course more with spirit and um, with resolve. And I think I'm very interested to hear your story, which I've only heard part of. And then an old and dear friend, Nikki, um, who I've known for many years. And when we were putting together um, a talk about maximizing physical function and two, which I think is so important, we couldn't think of two better people to do this. One, a high-performing athlete, and another, a high-performing athlete in a slightly different way. And I'll just close my introduction, at least about Nikki, by saying I have learned so, so much from Nikki. Um, she knows that, she doesn't know the extent of that, and um, she's the one who introduced me to a recumbent tricycle and the benefits it can have for patients with NF2. Um, she introduced me to a lot of other things, so I'm very grateful to both of you for being here, and we look forward to hearing of your experiences. I'll just note, uh, Mickey is deafened, right? So she'll be going back and forth, and if we need any cues, I'll try to give them to you. Okay? And then, if you tell me, I'll shift things up here. What should I start with? With Mickey? Oh, yeah. that's... Put off. 
Um, but then also when I was little, I had a lazy eye, and that was put off as just being sitting too close to the TV. You know, if you're too close to the TV, that's why you have a lazy eye. No one had any idea those things were connected. You know, and then it goes on and on, and um, and, and pretty soon then uh, I don't. With the hearing, I noticed it kind of getting a little worse. And then I moved to a larger school, went in high school to play football, because my little school didn't have football. I really wanted to play football. So I moved to this larger school, ended up having a football injury in the neck where I pinched a nerve. And you would think then that they would have had something, you know, they would have looked into it, but they didn't. Well, not too long after that, I moved back to my small school and finished off my junior and senior year. And I started to notice weakness in my right arm. <coughs> I couldn't outflux all the way, and you can see it now that I don't have the full outflux of the hand and the right. Um, but they, I, they thought that maybe that was just because of the pinch nerve in my neck. So now we have three things here that went down, and no one had put them together yet that NF2 was the issue. Um, so anyway, go on, 18 years old, I graduated high school, did, uh, science fair, nerd, all this other stuff. Um, I decided I wanted to join the Marine Corps. So I joined the Marine Corps, I got through all processing, I passed that thing. Even when I went to salute, they do a little test in processing where you have to salute. And I made sure to tuck my thumb under to make sure my pinky stayed raised so they didn't waver me off for that. And then I failed the hearing test. Back to the hearing test. So they sent me, they said, go get a medical waiver, you'll be fine, we'll get you in. Well, I went to get the medical waiver, the doctor's like, yeah, that's really bad. We're gonna do an MRI. So I did the MRI. And they end up finding the acoustic schwannomas, um, a larger mass on the upper outer brain, um, and then as well as um, a large, very, very large tumor around my C4 region in my neck. The one in my C4 region of my neck was actually so large that it was pancaking my spinal cord, and they were telling me that one wrong move, it was so large that I could end up almost paralyzed, Christopher Reeve style, completely from the neck down, or even death. So it really, really shocked me. And you know, that, that happened in a three week process like, from being a healthy young adult that I thought in my mind to, oh my gosh, I've got this freak genetic disorder and now I don't know what's gonna happen. Anyway, I went to surgery, had the surgery, my neck removed. During the surgery, my spinal cord swelled up to protect itself like it normally would do. But I also had another tumor in my lower spine around the T7 area. And whenever that tumor plus the spinal swelling that caused paralysis, basically from the lower rib cage down, is an impartial, incomplete injury. So then when they cut the one out of my neck, they messed up my hand and shoulder a little more, and also a little bit of function in my left hand. So together, the surgery, I went into surgery pretty healthy, and I came out kind of rolling. So it was a pretty dramatic turn of events there, and it was one of those things where I came out really destroyed, really, you know, upset, hating life, um, was stuck in my stuck in my room, depression mode. About three or four days after I though, I was blessed by an awesome nurse who got me into an awesome rehab facility. Finally decided to get in the power chair, roll outside, and the first guy I meet is a guy who had an industrial accident who was cut from his arm all the way down to his hip. He was a man with one arm and a torso, and that was it, rolling around on a bed chair, smiling, happy, greeting you, and it just boom, hit me like a ton of bricks, like here I am, I have everything. I'm pity, pity me, pity me, hate the world. And this guy just was like, God sent, like, no, wake up, you're fine. You've still got so much potential, so much more you can do. So anyway, those are my limiting factors. So that's what, that's what board, I like to say, I was talking to my wife about this, like, there's almost two sides of Derek. There's Derek, and then there's D-Rock, or Karak, as my teammates call me. This, is rock, all right? So it's just, it's the alternate e alter ego of me. And when when rock comes out, rock doesn't have enough two. Enough two has to deal with rock, and that's that's how it works. And that's his mental focus, you know. The hearing, whatever. The hearing, it's not that bad. Yeah, I miss some cues if somebody's yelling at me, or something like that. But it also, I don't hear the crap talking. There's a lot of crap talking on the court, and I don't hear any of that. I've never seen somebody so mad when they're trying to get you off balance and out of your game psychologically, but they can't do it. It makes them so mad when they're talking, talking, they just look at you like, oh, I can't get in this guy's head because he can't hear me. It's like, no, you can't. But, uh, so this is the game. Um, I play wheelchair rugby. I've been playing for uh, 10 years now. Actually, nine months after I was hurt, I said that I was hurt for a year just so I could get the medical clearance to play. I technically was supposed to be playing, but stuff was still healing, but I didn't care.
Um, this is uh, this is the sport. You see the chairs there outside this chair. I was wondering if Connor was around. Is he around? Here? He's coming. Back. Okay, I'm gonna have him push my rugby chair around. But he's like, I have my rugby chair up front. If afterwards anybody wants to take a look at it or check it out or anything like that. Um, basically, my sport is we are we are classified on a scale of 0.5 all the way up to 3.5, depending on your impairment level. I'm class 2.0, so I'm right in the middle. So people like really low quadriplegics or really high quadriplegics, I guess you're supposed to say, um, who have less function, they're on a scale um, of lower point class. And then the people who have more and more function are on a higher point class. So that's how you're determined. So actually, as, as far as physical function goes, the less function you have, the better off you are, because then you'll get more planning time, basically. So that's how that works. Um, this, they wanted to kind of go by. I want to make sure I stay to the physical function of this. Um, when it comes to the ball, um, obviously I have physical impairments versus uh, and whatnot, and then how you play the game. Um, you pick up cues as you go along, you know, like this is, like the, the right hand's my bad hand, but it's right hand dominant. So you have to learn, retrain yourself to start using your left hand, you know, you have to do that type of thing in in everything you do, you know, when you go to dribble, I want to dribble with my right, but I don't want to dribble with my right because it's a bad hand, and it might go flying off, and then I'll get deaf or something. So. This is me in Australia. Um, this place, I've, I've been, it's, rugby's taken me all over the world. I've been to Argentina, Colombia, Australia. Um, this is us playing out there. Um, and it, it, it's, I don't know if really, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm more for the Q&A, but I wanted to give you guys my background just so you know where I came from and what I do. Um, there are limiting factors in everyone's life, and it's from a small scale to a large scale. And really, for me, it's more of finding that that drop personality, and and really, really not not seeing anything as the down. Like uh, you've got to turn it around on itself, and and see, well, I still got this stuff. What can I do with this? You know, you got to push yourself, test yourself. You know, like me in the wheelchair. Some people be like, look at him trying to climb up that or do that or whatever. It's like, not look at him. Like I look at that as cannot. You know. I, there's three story floor. Uh, can I get up the stairs? I don't know. Let's try. You know, and that's the way you gotta look at life. You gotta the physical impairment will come, and but you gotta figure out what you still have left. And as long as you still have something left, you still have something you can do. And that's the way I look at the physical impairment. And even though it'll go on, it's great to hear like Matt Hay up here talking because I'm actually looking into the ABI and coming up and all that stuff. Um, so from from the physical function standpoint, you'll find a way. Humans are a genius in that way, that we'll, you'll find a way to do what you want to do and what you need to do. So, as far as I, and that's kind of my background, I wanted to give more of the physical function, so I'm hoping you guys have questions for it. But right now, I'm going to hand it over to Mache, and let Mache start talking, and then we'll go from there. I'm looking forward to hearing you speak. So thank you. First, don't you want to hug him? <laughs> And that's what I'm all about too. I'm not going to repeat 
cold winter. And with these, with time and these fasting surgery, I realized what a gift it was to be able to do these things. So I was walking back around town, coming up a steep hill, with the cold wind at the north, from the North Atlantic at my back, 10 degrees outside, because I can. That was my mantra, and it still is. You just have to adapt where and how you go with that. Soon after I moved to Maine, I started going to the gym and working out. Much to my surprise, I liked it. I've never done that before in my life. Um, about 10 years ago, I started yoga and meditation. And I now do chair yoga. And I still meditate. But those practices are very important to me. Four years ago, I had moved to Portland because uh, I needed to be closer to Boston. And I was going to the drugstore one day, plodding down the sidewalk with my walker, past a white shop, looked in the window, all these pretty shiny new lights in the window. And I thought, I wonder if they have trikes for grown ups. Have they ever heard of recumbents? Change the slide. Yeah. I've never heard of a recumbent trike. Um, even a kitty trike, just a big one, I would have taken that. I just wanted to do something. Well, I learned about recumbents and I bought one. And I tell you, it is just loads of fun. <laughs> I run all over, all over town. Usually go 30 to 40 miles a week, 7 to 10 miles each time now. My longest ride so far was 33.6 miles in one minute. I was a better shape man than I am now. I can work back up to it. Yeah, that was to a beach south of town and back, south of town and back. And I could have gone further, but it was getting dark. <coughs> I was with a friend, but still I don't ride after cars. Too many risks there. The uh, Portland's a hilly city. Um, but I managed that because my trike has 18 years. You just go into what they call rainy gears. And you go real slow, up the hill, pedaling as fast as you can. And I love it. The, um, seven years ago, my right leg was paralyzed after new surgery up here. So I tell you, going up those steep hills, seeing those leg muscles at work, that is a sweet thing. I do it because I can. I've even cycled me around in the winter. Um, it's not so bad as long as the roads are dry, if you have the right cold weather attire. Yeah. That was a 33.6 mile day. That's good. That's a surfer on a marsh. Beautiful. Huge marsh near the coast. The, uh, anyway, this fast winter I'm not rims of all snow and all things. We had 91 inches of snow last winter, so I'm just getting back into it this season. Since I no longer drive, the train is an important means of transportation for me. I use it to go shopping, um, go to see friends, go out for coffee, also just to go for a pleasure, pleasurable ride. I need to ask for help, for help, for help, with so many things now. So the independence of trite gives me, very important to me. The head turning function is one too. You got a lot of double takes when you're running your recovery. But the best, the part I love the most, feel the wind on my face. <laughs> I don't get to move fast anymore. No more skiing and snowshoeing, no more power walking. I love to go out on a boat, but that's complicated too. Also, I don't have a boat. <laughs> <laughs> the track is mine. 
means everything to me. So this is what I want to say to you. Sure, NFT was hard. We all know that. It's really hard. And the resultant disability is part of our blocks everywhere you turn around. But it also teaches you the stuff you made of. You're smart. You're strong. You're resourceful. So focus on the things you can do. Get out there and have fun. Don't put it off.